Hi, this is Joachim for statisticsglobe.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to draw a histogram in the base installation of the R programming language. So in the video I'm going to use the reverse data that you can see here in line 2 of the code as example data. And uh, this data set is already loaded with the base installation of R and contains the length of uh, the largest rivers in North America. So if you run line two of the code, you can see here at the bottom in the RStudio console, the reverse data set simply contains numeric values for the length of different rivers. Now, um, if we want to draw a histogram, a basic histogram of the rivers data, then we can do that, as you can see here in line five of the code, with the hist function. So hist stands for histogram. And within the hist function, we simply need to specify the name of our numeric data. So in this case, we are using the rivers data set. And if you run this line of code, you can see here at the bottom right, a basic histogram is created in the R programming language. So as you can see here, this uh, histogram is relatively plain and simple. And in the next examples, I'm going to show you how to modify the different parameters of this histogram. So first of all, in example two, I'm going to show you how to modify the main title of the histogram. So you can see right now, the default main title is histogram of rivers. And if we run line eight of the code, you can see that this is changed to length of rivers, of rivers in North America. In example three, uh, I'm going to use the call argument to specify the color of the histogram. So uh, now you can see the color of the bars of the histogram is changed. Uh, you can also see that uh, the main title is changed back to the default value. So if you would like to change the main title and the color together, then you would have to specify the main argument and the color argument within the same histogram function. So in example four, uh, we are going to change the number of breaks of our histogram. So right now you can see that the bars of the histogram, uh, the width of the bars of the histogram is relatively wide. So if we run uh, lines 16 to 17 of the code, you can see that the width of the bars is reduced. Um, we can also specify manual uh, breaks for our bars, as you can see here in lines 20 and 21 of the code. So here I'm specifying within the breaks argument um, at which points the breaks should be. So uh, if we run this line, these two lines of code, you can see that the first break is uh, at 250, the second break is at 300, the third break at 400 and so on. And what you also can see is that the bars of our histogram have a different width. So in example six of the code, um, I'm going to use the xlim and the ylim arguments to specify a different, uh, to specify different limits of our axis. So uh, as you can see here now, the axis limit of the x-axis is increased to 5,000 and of the y axis to 120. Uh, here you have to be careful uh, that you don't cut off some parts of your distribution. Uh, in example seven of the code, I'm uh, going to show you how to draw a histogram together with a density plot. So if we want to do that, we first need to create our histogram. And here we have to be uh, careful because we need to specify the prop argument, which means uh, probability, to be equal to true. And uh, then it also makes sense to increase the volume a little bit uh, in order to uh, make sure that the whole density is plotted later on. So if you run this, you can see this is our original histogram, but this time the density uh, is based on probabilities because we specified prop to be equal to true. Now, on top of this histogram, we can draw a density, as you can see here in line 32 of the code, 
with the lines function combined with the density function. And then we are also specifying our density to have the color red. So if you run this line of code, you can see that our density is created on top of our histogram. Yeah, so the last example that I want to show you here, starting from line 34 of the code, is uh, how to print the values of each bar of our histogram on top of the histogram. And uh, if we want to do that, we first need to store the values of our histogram um, here in a new data object. We can simply do that by running the histogram function on our data and then store it in a new data object, as you can see here in line 35 of the code. So if you run this code, you will see that a new data object appears here at the top right. And we can also have a look at this data object by running line 36 of the code. And uh, as you can see here, uh, this data object contains several information on our histogram. And now we can use the mids and the counts information of this hist values data object to print the values of our bars on top of each bar. So if you run lines 37 to 40 of the code, you will see that the value of each bar appears on top of it. Yeah, so that's basically what I wanted to show you in this video. However, if you want to learn more about histograms in the R programming language, you could check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on the homepage I have recently published a detailed tutorial on the creation of histograms in R, and uh, I will put a link to this tutorial in the description of this video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, of course, I would be very happy if you leave me a comment and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to get notifications about future releases when I'm releasing new videos. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Bye bye.